My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of AF and especially AF in young patients. By young, I mean under the age of 60. Now, the first thing to say is that most of the AF we see occurs in older patients, usually those above the age of 60, and therefore much of what we know about AF comes from studies involving older patients. What we are, however, beginning to realize is that AF can occur in younger patients too. And perhaps this group of patients represents a group of patients that we do need to study and research a lot more because what we understand about the causes of AF and the disease progression may not be extrapolatable to younger patients. The prevalence of AF in the young is significantly lower in the order of 0.5%. Whilst we blame age and comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension, obesity in the elderly, the same comorbidities are not seen to such a great extent in younger patients. In these patients, there are thought to be three main possible causes which are always worth considering uh, when you're faced with a young patient with AF. Number one, the propensity of AF could have been inherited. Number two, the AF could be the first manifestation of silent cardiac disease, i.e. if the heart muscle were in some way abnormal, and that's very difficult to test unless the muscle looks abnormal, then it is more likely to be irritable. And the third cause may be that there may be an abnormality of the ionic channels within the heart, which makes, which regulate the electricity within the heart. And this is termed a channelopathy. Common channelopathies include uh, Brugada syndrome, Long QT syndrome, etc. I was very interested in understanding what we already know about AF in the young, and I found a really interesting paper on this subject. It was published by Wutzler et al. in 2016, and a reference for this paper will be available on my website, uh, cardiologist.com. So, now Wutzler et al. studied 124 patients who were below the age of 35 years when they first presented with their AF, and they followed them up for an average of about four years to see what happened to them, uh, they noted some interesting findings which I'll share with you. Firstly, 57% of this group of patients, these young patients, did have some comorbidities of or underlying structural heart disease. 20% of these patients actually had an underlying cardiomyopathy. So the first important message is that it is important when you're young and you have AF to see a cardiologist and for him to look hard for an underlying cardiomyopathy as this may be the cause and you want to treat that. And of course, it's very important to address any comorbidities. Interestingly, none of these patients had a stroke during the follow-up, but it is also worth noting that 36% of the study group were already taking a blood thinning medication and anticoagulant. Hence, the second point is that until we have more data, it is recommended that patients who uh, have comorbidities or, who, uh, or structural heart disease should still take an anticoagulant regardless of their age. Uh, no one dropped down su dead suddenly, so it appears that at least from this study that AF in young patients does not confer an increased risk of sudden cardiac death, which is a concern for a lot of people. All the patients who had a cardiomyopathy were noted to have it at the beginning of the study. None of the patients then went on to develop the cardiomyopathy during the course of the um, course of the study the four years and so it doesn't appear so if you have an abnormal echo at the beginning then that's fine if on the other hand uh, you have a normal echo then it's unlikely that you'll develop a cardiomyopathy 57 of percent of these patients were also found to have an incidental svt when um, they underwent more detailed electrophysiological studies most of them had been referred because they were young they'd been referred for af ablation but when they uh, researchers went in to do the ablation they did an electrophysiological study and they found that 57 percent of these people had an svt as well which had been undiagnosed and in these people what they decided to do was they decided to ablate the SVT because in SVT you have an extra pathway in the heart. When you're doing an AF ablation, you're uh, ablating around the pulmonary vein 
uh, much more complex on the other hand with an SVT you're finding an extra pathway and you're just ablating that and therefore what was really interesting is when these um, researchers uh, ablated this SVT these patients became free of AF which is really really interesting so this is a small study but it tells us a few things one think of other things um, when you're young and you have af you know structural heart disease of course echocardiography is really important look for things like sleep apnea uh, blood pressure uh, obesity all that kind of thing secondly go and see a cardiologist um, and um, make sure that you don't have an underlying cardiomyopathy Thirdly, it's always good to have detailed electrophysiological studies because a significant proportion of people also have an SVT. And it seems that in some way the SVT may confer an increased risk of AF. And if you ablate the extra pathway causing the SVT, then um, the AF seems to go away. So I hope you found this useful. Um, as I say, a full transcript is available on my website. Uh, and once again, thank you for all that you do for me. All the best.